Good evening, everyone. Welcome to week two of the interruptions uh, kind of teaching series that we're doing right now with Compassion Church. And I am excited to do uh, this each week with us. The goal is it's just a small uh, teaching for us to take a moment, pause during the middle of the week, and look at what it means to have an interruption and see the amazing men and women of God and how they dealt with interruptions in life. Because I think we all can agree that's what we're all experiencing right now around the world. So tonight we're going to dig into one of my favorite biblical characters from the Old Testament, uh, Moses, who is such an amazing leader. He is strong. He is you know, a wise leader. Yet at the same time, he's so authentic and real from the beginning of his journey. And that's what I love so much about him, because I think so oftentimes to become a great leader or to do great things for God, it begins with a, a recognition of how great he is and how maybe small we are. And being honest about our imperfections and having humility and allowing the Lord to train us and perfect us through his Holy Spirit. So that's why I love Moses so much. And we're going to dig right in. So if you got your Bibles or your phones, pull up to uh, the book of Exodus. And we're going to read chapter 3. But I want to just look right before chapter 3 and look at chapter 2, verses uh, probably 20 through 23. Okay, so just to catch you up, when you read the book of Moses, or I'm sorry, the book of Exodus, we see a lot of things happening uh, with Israel suffering and what they're going through. And we see, you know, the, the uh, I'm forgetting his name. Oh, Pharaoh, sorry. The Pharaoh is doing horrific things to the people of, of, of Israel and such oppression. And it's such a departure from what happened with Joseph in Genesis and everything's changed now. And so the people of Israel are crying out to God and there's anger, there's strife growing. And, and here's this man named Moses who's born. Uh, he's found by uh, Pharaoh's daughter, and he grows up. And as you see in verses 11 through 20, uh, he murders an Egyptian who was oppressing a fellow Hebrew, and he runs for his life, and he's being pursued, and he flees to a place called Midian. Okay, now let's pick up in verse 23. In 23, it says, now it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. Then the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage, and they cried out, and their cry came up to God because of their bondage. Now, if you go up a couple of verses, you'll see in verse 21, at the same time that that was happening, what, what God just says there, or I'm sorry, what the author of Exodus says about the prayers rising up to God, it says in verse 21 that Moses was content to live with the man who was uh, his father-in-law, and he gave the father, Zipporah, his daughter, to Moses. Okay, so you have, verse, uh, you have verse 24, where there's this groaning, there's this crying out to God, while at the same time, Moses has fleed into Midian, and he's content, he's relaxing, he's taking it easy, you know what I mean. And this tension is brewing, and God is seeing what's happening, and he's looking for somebody. He's looking for someone who can rise up, right? And so God is about to interrupt Moses' life in such a huge huge way okay so remember moses during this time was content was just doing his thing nothing was bothering him he was a shepherd he had he was safe in midian he was away from all who were pursuing him he had a wife now so he probably thought smooth sailing right we like to think at least all right so now look at chapter three and i'm going to read from chapter three verse one to six and what we're about to see is the first aspect of Moses' life and his interruption. And that first one is going from contentment to holiness. Now think about your own life as we go through this. All right, beginning of verse 1. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, and the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert, and he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. He said, here I am. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. What's so amazing to me is that 
Moses is doing his thing and God has to go to such a drastic measure to get his attention. And so this bush catches on fire, right? Uh, flames, heat, all these things. And Moses sees it. And I love how the author says, you know, I will now look to see why this is burning, right? This is the New King James Version. So sometimes it's a little more robotic in how it's coming out. But I like to think that Moses was probably freaked out, shocked, wondering how on earth did this just kindle and catch fire? You know, it shocked him, I imagine. And he drew near to the fire. This was an interruption. This was not a norm. This is not something he was preparing for, not something he was looking out for, but God used that to get his attention. Okay, so time out for a second. Think about how we live our lives, what we go through, the things that you know, we encounter every day while we are just content to do what we do. Okay, how many times do you think God's trying to get our attention with an interruption? Now, this whole you know, COVID-19 Remember, like I said last time with Abraham, I'm not saying that God is doing this to say, okay, I'm getting everyone's attention now. It's not what I'm saying. But I do believe God can use circumstances and situations that we encounter to draw us to a new awareness of his presence, a new uh, alertness to what he wants to do with us or our response. It could be tragedy, a death in a family. It could be losing our job. It could be uh, a, a pandemic. You know, it could be anything. But what we have to have is a posture of humility, wondering, God, are you trying to get my attention? You know, how can I respond to what, what's happening? A lot of times we choose to stay in contentment versus going into holiness. Now, maybe you're wondering, okay, how does holiness connect with this? How does something, you know, about purity and, and you know, um, unblemishedness or, or sinlessness connect with going from contentment to, you know, how does this connect? I'm glad you asked. What we see here is that God drew him in. He, he interrupted his life. He got his attention. He brought him closer and closer to himself. There's a reason. His holiness, God's holiness, is something that is so beyond our comprehension, free of sin, free of anything, uh, that is completely close to a lot of the brokenness of humanity. Okay? The two words always used in Hebrew, uh, kodosh, and I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, and in Greek, uh, hagios, these words are used to talk about the holiness of God, the holiness we are called to live in as Christ's followers. But the goal is that the closer we get to the Father, the more holiness we should be growing in, as well as the more holiness we should encounter of Him, okay? Through prayer, through worship, through the Word, where we get a sense of, oh my gosh, God, you are so holy. You are so mighty. You are so great and so wonderful, and we're held speechless. See, so many of us, we stay in contentment. We don't have those encounters anymore. Everything's been reduced to just reading a couple of verses, having a, a devotional, uh, reading something that just gets us a, a little bit for the day. But we're not having those moments like Moses had with God where we're drawn into such a deep place of holiness. And you see what God did is he brought an interruption to the content, you know, cushy life of Moses. And he drew him into something new. And that was holiness. He drew him into a new place of a holy dissatisfaction, a fire burning inside for Moses. Okay, so that whole phrase from contentment to holiness, if we allow interruptions to do what God wants them to do at times, I believe it takes us from a place of sitting on our couch, sitting on our chair, you know, just going through the motions, even as Christians, to a place now we, he's got our attention and we draw in. And now we're coming closer to his presence and we're seeking him more. We're praying more. We're in the word more. And this brings a holiness. Because the closer we get to him, the more heat, the more fire we feel of his, and we are purged. The sin in our lives is purged. The, the selfish agendas are purged, okay, which segues into the next part. Look at verses 7 to 15 of the same chapter. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hevitites. I think I said that right. And the Jebusites. Okay. Now, verse nine. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Pause for a second. Think about that. I mean, that is crazy. What an amazing task and responsibility God is giving to this man who was just so content 
being a shepherd. He was just taking his herd to the back of the desert. And now this, I, I can't even imagine this. Okay, verse, uh, verse 11, sorry. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? So he said, I will certainly be with you. And, you shall, and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. And then Moses said to God, indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent you. Real quick, that might be the most confusing verse in the Bible. Um, as a kid, I remember seeing this verse and being like, what on earth is God saying here? But look at verse 15. Moreover, God said to Moses, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial to all generations. See what God does now. And we'll just keep, uh, you know, a classic progression going. Number two, uh, if number one is God takes Moses because of an interruption from contentment to holiness, what happens now is God is taking Moses from a personal agenda to God's mission. Big difference there. A personal agenda is something that we usually do not allow the Holy Spirit to speak into. It's our flesh. It's driven by what we believe our own hands can accomplish, which is great. We can do some amazing things, but I don't know about you, but I don't want my agenda. I want the mission of God to lead me to lead my family, my marriage, what we do, how we spend money, how we plan. Because the mission of God is when God is taking you in his hands and he's, he's purging you, he's sharpening you, he's, he's taking you to a place that you didn't understand that you could even walk into. Because you have walked in holiness, because you've cho chosen to say goodbye to contentment, he's not able to use you like he's using Moses. Okay, so that's what we see happening right here. God is calling out and identifying the area of injustice with his children in Israel. And he's had enough. He doesn't like it. And he's looking for somebody to rise up. And there's Moses. And he interrupts his life and he gets his attention. And he says in verse 10, I will send you. But do you notice his reaction? I love how he says it. Who am I? Verse 11, that I should go to Pharaoh. Who am I? How could I do this? Go ahead to verse, uh, I'm sorry, chapter four. Look at chapter four, verse 10. Then Moses said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. Translated, I stutter. I'm terrified to speak in public. I'm not good. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to lead. You see, everything about Moses in that moment was looking at all of his insufficiency. He was content staying where he was. God wanted to do so much in him. But here was the problem with Moses, and here's the problem with most of us. The greatest reason that we allow ourselves to stay in the place of personal agenda and contentment is because we magnify what we are not versus who God is. Okay, that's so important. We magnify what we are not, who we are not, what we can't do, versus magnifying the power of God at work in us through his Holy Spirit. Moses was just a regular person, and God did something extraordinary through his life. He had weaknesses, he had insecurities, he had fears. God did something beautiful, all because of an interruption, because Moses allowed that moment to take him from contentment to leaning in to the holiness of God. And when set apart, which is holiness, being set apart, now when he's experiencing the fire and the passion of God, his personal agenda is falling by the wayside, and now he is getting in alignment with the mission of God and what God is calling him to. That's what we're called to do with our lives. That's what we're called to, uh, to do when we have interruptions. It's allow us to lean in a little closer, say, okay, God, you got my attention. I need to get into your word. I need to listen to you. What are you speaking right now? In that section we read, to comfort Moses, because he does have insecurities. God does something so beautiful, and I love it. He says to him, I am has sent you. Moses says, who am I going to say sent me? I am. It's a statement of being. It's saying that, listen, I'm the one from the beginning. There's no one before me. I never was. I'm never not going to. I just, I am. 
I am always here. I always have been. It's me. It's a very confusing thought and understanding of, a, you know, of God and his nature. But it, what it means is like, this is my track record. I am the God of your fathers. I am is sending you. What is so amazing. Now let's jump way ahead. We're going to take a little detour real quick. Go to the book of John chapter 8. I love Jesus so much, and I love what he says in a rebuttal to the Pharisees who were coming against him. Oh, I love this. I, I swear I could stand up and start uh, celebrating because I love how he says this. I'll pick up in verse 53. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who's dead, and the prophets are dead? Who do you make yourself out to be? See, these were the, the um, you know, those coming against Jesus because of his statements of who he was. And his response is this. Verse 54, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father who honors me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet you have not known him, but I know him. And if I say I do not know him, I shall be a liar like you. But I do, but I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and he was glad. Verse 57, then the Jews said to him, you are not yet even 50 years old. And you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them and so passed by. Then Baber tells you that Jesus just claimed to be a good teacher, a good man. Uh, it's false. What we just heard right there is God equating himself with the very divinity of Yahweh, of God, of I am. It's so important for our theological understanding, for our foundation as Christians. Okay, so, you know, Moses hears that it's God saying, I am ascending you. So Moses has a sense of confidence. He goes from contentment to holiness. He goes from personal agenda to the mission of God. And now we see something beautiful happen. Real, real simple, last part, and then we're going to call it a, a night. Look at chapter four, verse 18. Really profound. You ready for this? Just the th first three words. Verse 18. So Moses went. So Moses went. We could spend a lot more time reading the whole chapter and later on, but just those three words. So Moses went. So many unanswered questions. So many, you know, so much fear and confusion, I can imagine. So much wondering, okay, I said I have a stutter. I don't know how you're going to do this yet, but okay, I trust you, but I kind of don't trust you. I'm kind of scared, but wow, I experienced the holiness of God. I heard your voice. He went. We don't need to wait to have all the answers, every single duck in a row, to understand what it means to be obedient to God. When the Holy Spirit calls us, leads us, and empowers us with his presence and his gifts and his ministries, we go. We go. Okay. Moses went. I often wonder, you know, what did it take for Moses to cross that chasm? Did he spend sleepless nights? Did he pray? Did he agonize? Uh, was he wondering so intently, like, what's this going to be like? I don't know. But he went. And that's all that matters. And that's a whole heck of a lot more than many of us do at times, myself included. My challenge to you from looking at this in the week two of our interruption series is recognizing that, you know, for Moses, he responded to God getting his attention to an interruption. And, you know, this virus might not be your interruption. It could happen in a year from now. It could happen two months ago, whatever. But an interruption is something that causes you to stop, to pause, and to almost change course and have to cling to something greater than yourself to keep you afloat. Who do you turn to? If you turn to a spouse, if you turn to a parent, if you turn to a friend, if you turn to a family member, that's great. But they're not God. God has given us the greatest friend in the Holy Spirit. He is the one we lean upon. He is the one we fellowship with. He is the friend and the confidant and the advocate and the encourager who is with us, who gives us strength. To go from contentment to holiness is to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you into all truth. To go from, uh, you know, a, a personal agenda to God's mission, the Holy Spirit can empower you to do that. But you just got to listen. You got to respond to the interruption. 
to go to our third one, which I didn't say it yet, which is simply to go from sitting to going, it requires obedience and stepping up to the plate and how the Holy Spirit has called you to lead and to go. Because I'm telling you this, while Moses was simultaneously content and God was paying attention to him in justice, the Holy Spirit was ready to move in the life of Moses. Right now, there is injustice. There are people who do not, do not know Jesus. And you're content. I'm content. What's it going to take to get our attention? Do you think God tried to get Moses' attention way more times than he had to resort to a burning bush? I tend to think so. I have no proof, but I think so. Because Moses is just like you and I. Usually takes 30, 40 times for God to get our attention, and finally we do. But let's not at last, or let's not allow it to take that long. Let's respond to what he wants to communicate to us. My wife always has a saying that I love so much. Now, she brought it up a while back. You know, she said, when we think about purpose and what God wants us to be doing, to go from contentment to you know, action and, and being set apart by God for a mission of going, you usually have to ask the question, what breaks your heart? What breaks your heart? What pulls on those heartstrings when you look out in humanity? Better yet, what makes you angry? What makes you irate? What injustice drives you to just frustration and anger? Usually there's a ministry somewhere in there. There's a passion. There's a call. There's an injustice that God is waiting for you to step up to the plate. But you need to go through the burning bush moment. You need to go through the season of holiness being set apart. You need to be strong in the word. You need to be strong in the spirit. If you have nothing to give, then you're going to give from a deficit. And burnout will happen. Fatigue will happen. The goal is for us to be strong warriors, arrows in the hands of our God completely equipped and empowered by a, a deep presence uh, within us, which is the Holy Spirit. He wants to do that with you. He wants to walk with you and empower you and speak to you. Allow him to, okay? So that's week two of our interruption series. Uh, I'm going to turn the, the camera off here in a moment. Before I do, I just want to pray over us, okay? Now, wherever you're at tonight, be strong, be encouraged. Allow the interruptions to draw you closer to God and be full of joy of his spirit. Uh, I love what Paul says in Ephesians, not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, another way of thinking about it is being drunk with the spirit, right? Which I've heard that phrase used poorly at times, but, but what Paul is trying to communicate is be so full of the spirit of God that he is your joy. He is your confidence. He is your guide. He is your everything. Because that, that is the normal Christian life, okay? So, Father, I thank you for tonight. Thank you for the example of Moses. Father, empower us to be the leaders we're called to be. Empower us to be the believers we're called to be. And I pray, Lord, you would help us to lean in more to discover what it is you want to speak to us regarding what we do, what we're passionate about, what our mission is. Father, we want to leave contentment. And, Father, this is a great season of time to be your hands and feet in such creative ways. So, Lord, allow this interruption to draw us closer to you, to allow your spirit to move in such beautiful ways. Holy Spirit, we love you. We love you so much. And uh, my heart is filled with joy at the, the even saying of your name, because you are my greatest friend. You are our greatest ally, and uh, we love you so much. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've accomplished for us. And we thank you, Father, for, for looking after all of us all the time. Uh, we pray this together in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great night, everybody. Um, we'll see you back here next week from the home office for uh, Interruptions Week 3.